from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. And you know what they say about dark Italians. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 TOM. 1 800 5 800 866. It's like it's 101, the ongoing on air adult education course. I teach us men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1 800 5 800 TOM. It's 1 800 5 800 866. Jonah. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jonah. How are you, man? Do you care? Uh, yeah, of course. I'm doing great. All right, man, I have a question for you, because I, I remember a caller a couple of weeks ago, and uh, she said that she saw you at a hockey game, and you were being a gentleman with some girl, and you acted real suspicious and stuff, so I was just wondering if all this that you're saying is, you know, just for the show to get, you know... To get more listeners, or is this really what you do? Uh, believe me, any number of women who've dated me will tell you what a jerk I really am. <laughs> All right, man. I was just, it's just, because I was I am an out and out, out balls to the wall creep. And then, um, I mean, you act really suspicious. No? Well, that's up to you, and you believe what you want to believe. And by the way, she did not say I was being a gentleman. She said that I was with a very hot girl. I her I remember the call. Well, I remember her saying that you're a complete gentleman, and then you said, "Well, don't say that," and then you just went to a commercial. Well, I think what it was saying was that I was a gentleman to her when she spoke to me, uh, which I was because I wasn't trying to have sex with her. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, Tom, right. Being a gentleman was, uh, does not get you. By the way, know. being a gentleman does not get laid, and I would not be with hot chicks if I were not a jerk. Yeah, I know. So she confirmed for you I was with a hot girl, right? Yeah, yeah. It's because I then I didn't hear it correctly because she said that uh, that you were being a complete gentleman. But I how would she know how I'm being with somebody? I I don't let people hang out with me when I'm with chicks. What are you talking about? No, I she, thought no, I thought the girl you're that, with, the girl, the girl you're trying to, you know, that wasn't the girl I was with. That was somebody who saw me with a girl. Yeah, I know, but I heard wrong. That's what I'm telling you. That I heard that. That's um, that's exactly right. You heard wrong. Let's not beat a dead horse. This is Panos on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Panos. Hello, what's up, bro? Not much. Man, uh, I have a very bad story. I I come home from work. Uh, I catch I catch my girlfriend uh, smoking marijuana in my house. Uh, what is your question, Panos? My question is, what should I do to her? <laughs> you don't do anything to her. You leave. I I get the picture frame. Uh, I smash it on the guy's head, and I, I kick her out. Seconds of material there, Art, and move on. Bad Cranko. Bad. 1-800-5800. You know what? I, I invented many of the crank calls and talk radio. I've been making them since I was a kid. Love a new one. Love a creative one. <laughs> when one comes in, I'll be happy to recognize it as such. Darius on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Hey, I just heard your last caller in the... I just had something to say about that, and uh, I have heard if you treat them like dirt, they do stick to you like mud, so cheers on that. Uh, I'm a calling dude. I'm 23, married, very what? newly married. Why'd you do that? Um, I was pretty sure I love her, that's why. But uh, How long have you been a student here? 
Um, not long. Uh huh. I've been listening for maybe a month and a half, two months. So you started listening after you got married? Yeah. Yeah, I was introduced to it uh, by my friend Derek over here. Uh, yeah. I, I I was considering the DTB option. She's kind of she's kind of controlling it and and such. You know what I mean? But I'm um, having a kid with it, so. It Why did you do that? I guess I just I guess I just left it in for a little too long. Uh, you, you know what? Again, the ignorance out there is stunningly appalling. Do you understand that the pull-out method does not work? I uh, guess not. <laughs> no, no. It does not work. There's no such thing as doing it right. There's no way to do it right, huh? No. Okay, well, maybe maybe you could help me with some advice instead of uh, jumping the... I mean, I got a kid. I don't want to run out on the kid. How How would I... How would I get her to ease up on me? And what did I there? say at the beginning of this class? What did I say at the beginning of this class? Uh, don't do it in the first place. No. I said this class is not for people who want to improve their marriages or their relationships. That's a good point. Our students are not married. You have some pretty smart students, then, don't you? That's right. <laughs> I don't fix bad brake jobs here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I That was a sign I saw in a gas station once. It said, we fix bad brake jobs. <laughs> All right, Tom. Thanks. I'm not here to fix your bad brake job. Right. There's no fixing it. You got yourself into a really bad situation, and calling a radio program and expecting help fixing it, it can't be fixed. All right. You're effed. If you intend to stay there, you're effed. The only way out is to get out. Get out and just forget about Get out, life, huh? which you just said that you wouldn't do. It wouldn't be right to run out on the kid, would it? You got married because you knocked her up. That's the part you left out here, right? Uh, no, actually, she's only one month pregnant, so... What did I say at the beginning? Uh, why is the radio... Why do I hear the radio? Oh, because my driver here is trying to listen in on the what did What did Dean tell you when he screened the call about turning the radio off? He said turn it off. And why do I hear it? No, Tom. You have no discipline. There are no rules for you. And you're going to find out the hard way because life is going to slap you back in the face. Yeah, I'm betting it will, too. I'm oh, it's already happening. Yeah, you know what? I, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, the ironic part is I think I already knew before I called, but uh, I guess a second opinion never hurts. Time to make some rules for yourself, Buster. That's true. Uh, how about you find out what a condom is? <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, you think that's funny? No, I, I think it's funny that I'm sitting here in this situation, and I don't mean fun, uh, funny like I'm a dumbass, but that's okay. I'm sure everyone knows that by now. They do. You've just announced it to the world. All right, Tom, can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Andy on Like Us One Hundred One. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Why would you say that? I don't know. I never called in before. It's that's clear. <laughs> What's up, Dad? How's it going? Not much. I nothing like sitting on uh, on the air wasting time. I just love it. Okay, I'll get to the point. Um. I'm having sex with this girl, right? And uh, she she has a kid, so, you know, but she's in a rehab where she's not allowed to have kids and no kids Wait a minute, out. so let's review. Banging a single mother, yeah. which we tell you not to do. She's in rehab, so she's got baggage. Strike oh. two. What else? Uh, well, she's not that good looking. But that's the only one in my bullpen, you know? What? Yeah, I need some more in my bullpen. First of all... You need to not have single mothers in your bullpen. 
Yeah, but you know, you know, desperate times call for you know desperate Again. measures. Again, pal, let me ask you a question. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, uh, any one night of the week is thirty seconds of ejaculating worth two hundred and sixteen months of payments? No, no, no. I wrap it up too. What if it leaks? Yeah, yeah, I know. What if it leaks? Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, I mean, some of you guys are just too stupid for words. Seriously. Seriously. Jesus Christ. one 800 800 I'm not even going to tell you how that ended. Not because we had to dump it. Because that's not even the problem. This is a guy who stupidly thinks he can have sex with a single mother and that there will be no consequences. Jesus. Joseph on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Thank you, Tom Likas. I got a real problem. All right, this girl asked me out on, on a date. And then, then she flakes on me. But I get this. She, she goes out with her boss instead, right? And then she, uh, I said, hey, let's see another movie. Cause we were, uh, she said, uh, I just saw that movie with my boss. And then, uh, she flakes on me. Then I say, uh, let's, you know, let's go out to lunch. And she's like, uh, yeah, okay. Then I call her. She's like, I'm too busy. But the worst part of it is, man, I was like, yeah, you know, we can't use phrases like that on the air. Holy cow. You know, again, folks, I'm going to remind you in case you're new to this classroom. Um, we have instituted a zero tolerance policy. If you say something super graphic that's going to get us in trouble with the feds, you don't get a second chance. That's the end of your conversation right then and there. So if you want to experiment with various, uh, uh, euphemisms for uh, graphic sexual activity. Well, you're just going to find yourself hung up on and your entire last 70 seconds of the conversation wiped off the air. That's what's going to happen. Can't make this any clearer. And we're going to just keep ripping through you guys until we find somebody who can talk for two minutes without saying a curse word or without getting on the air and experimenting with... Uh, 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 lascivious conversation. We can't do it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing? Doing okay. Okay. Um, well, this isn't a, it's not really a question. It's a good little story you'd probably like to hear. I was with this girl for about three, three and a half, four years. The, the girl you'd want, you know, uh, innocent, you know, uh, deceitful, you know, not knowing at the time. Just perfect, you know, clean, cute, you know, perfect. She, uh, head over heels. Problem was, I was, uh, a little more experienced than her. She really, uh, didn't have much relationship experience. And I should have, I should have taken that at the time, but I didn't know at the time. So anyway, I'm, uh, her dad's worst enemy, right off the bat, you know, and, uh, she has problems. So I move her into my house. Uh, she doesn't drive. She had absolutely nothing. Uh, I got her through high school. And while I was working, I drive her every day to get a continuation adult school. Got her a diploma. Um, and she would work. I would drive her to go to work. I'd have to leave work early to pick her up. Did everything I could for her, basically. And uh, everything's good. Well, one night, she wants to go out with her friends alone. No big deal. She didn't do it too often. Go ahead. Well, uh, she comes back that night. After she can stay the night there. And, you know, it's her friend's house. That's cool. No big deal. Uh, the next morning, I wake up to her packing her bags. What the hell's going on? Oh, the tension between us is, you know, it's just been getting too much. I'm going to go back to my dad's for a couple of weeks. Okay. That's cool. I understand. So, you know, we take a little time off. Well, uh, that night, I go back home. I get dressed up. And I just uh, happen to go to the liquor store for a pack of cigarettes. And I see a group of my friends, so I'm talking to them for about 10 minutes. I'm like, all right, guys, I'm about to bail, so I'll see you later. Hey, John John. Hey, I'm sorry to hear, man, about your girlfriend. What are you talking about? Well, you know, you know about her and Adam, right? Adam had lived with me for four years when we were 16. Uh, no, 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 14. 14, 15, 16, yeah, three years. Lived in my house, my best friend. Yeah, well, the, you know, they hooked up last night at Jackie's. Are you kidding me? 
I, I didn't believe it. You know, I, I told all of them, you guys are crazy. She wouldn't do that to me, and I know that for a fact. I had that much faith in her, right? So, uh, I drive to her house. It's true. She feels bad, yada, yada, I'm pissed. To be honest with you, I don't know, I was pretty mad I spit on her. So she made me sick. And, uh, no more shit again. Anyway, you know, the love thing at a young age, so... Uh, we end up talking again. Well, she has a trip. She wants to go visit her mom in Massachusetts. That's cool. She calls me when she, when she lands, you know, in Massachusetts. Yeah, how was your flight? It was horrible. I had to sit by this guy. He smelled. He was disgusting. He, he was burping. It's horrible, but I'm here now. I'm like, how's your mom? She's good. You see my little brother. He's so big now. So, she, you know, I look at the number on the caller ID. She didn't know I had a caller ID at the time. Uh, it's an Arizona number. So I'm like, hmm, that's weird. I call it back, and it's my friend Adam at the Air Force. She went to go visit him. It's the same guy that she had cheated on me with, my best friend. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, you know, so... So the moral of the story is? The moral of the story is, uh, pretty much, they're all evil. And uh, I don't want to say it like that, but Tom, check this out. She disappears. We don't talk to her two years, right? After we had broken up, I had done some things while we were together. We messed around on a little bit. She had never found out. Well, she uh, she she put me through it. I, you know, I wanted to get back with her, and I call her, and she was just like basically toying with me. And uh, I did nothing but good for this girl, as, as far as she knew. You know what I mean? Well, well, this is a very long story. Can we get to the bottom line, please? Anyway, she pops up two years later. She's trying to get back to me. She tells me, uh, I have a kid now, but I've thought about you every day. I know what I've done. All right, she's just a whore. Look, the moral of the story is she's just a whore. And you were a moron for having a relationship at some at such a young age. Yeah, I was. And you're a but, moron for continuing to talk to her. Tom, but, but I, I told her, I said, hey, look, um, you know, since you've been calling me these last couple of days, you know, I have, I have to admit I've been pretty uh, stressed out. I was doing much better without you in my life. I don't need this. Would you please do me a favor and never call me again? And she heard it. She, she knows it. It hurt me when I talked to her. And I was serious. She said, yeah. Two days later, it calls. So have you thought about what you said? Yeah, please don't call me. Hang up. Well, she, now my sister, my little sister's getting married in two weeks, and she's in it. She weaseled her way into the wedding, and she's calling me like nothing happened. And it's just, it's just like, is that not ridiculous? What do, I, what do I have to do? I wouldn't be going to that wedding. I wouldn't be going to that wedding. Bottom line. And um, why you're talking to somebody like this, I don't know. And it's because you're a little boy. You still haven't matured yet. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You just want to hit them and quit them. Bang them and clang them. Use them and lose them. Pump them and dump them. That's what you want to do. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. Wow. It's the Tom Likas Show, Likas 101. I am your professor. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello? Yes? How you doing? I've got, uh, got a question for you. So... Um, you know, I've, I've been, you know, living my life kind of, it sounds like, you know, I've only listened to your show a couple times, but, you know, it sounds similar to yours. I'm going out a lot. I'm, you know, picking up a lot of women, uh, having a great time. Uh, but, you know, when, when is it time to, to, let's say you're looking for, for a, you know, a woman that you want to date for a while. You want to not necessarily settle down right away, but... Uh, you know, somebody that you'd like to date for a while. Uh, you know, I, I'm not so sure going out and, and talking your game all the time and, and, and taking that approach is the best way to do it. What do you think? Well, I mean, my advice is for guys who want to get laid. You understand? I understand. That's who my advice is for. So. You know, is this, is this, you know, is this forever? This is how you do it forever? I mean, you're just going to get laid. You can do whatever you like. Uh, my opinion is, number one, settling down is not something you have to do as a group. You can be settled down on your own. 
You can have a permanent place to live. You can have a great job. You can have money put away. You can be responsible. You don't need a female there to do that. And in fact, many females will get in the way of you trying to do that. By spending all your money, spending unwisely, giving you bad advice, killing your dreams. But if that's what you want, go ahead. Uh, what, what do you do for a living, son? Uh, I'm in the mortgage business. That's uh, uh, kind of a tough business to be in right now, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah, so what's the future in that game? Uh, it's, you know, I, I don't, I don't consider it a, uh, a long-term gig. Right. So what do you want to be when you grow up, son? Let's, Co let me guess, you have no college degree. I have a, co I have a college degree. In what? <laughs> in, in finance. Finance? Finance? That's right. And you're whoring out mortgages at a time like this? That's the best job you could get? Uh, what university did you get that degree from? The University of Wisconsin. Oh boy. In in Madison? That's right. Oh, well, the Madison Radisson? <laughs> Where I've did stayed you go to school? At, I've stayed at the Madison Radisson, by the way. That is? That's how I know it exists. <laughs> right. And you came to Los Angeles from the University of Wisconsin. Why? Seems like a good idea. It's a fun place to live. It's beautiful, good weather, good-looking women. All true. And, and your reason for wanting to settle down is because you're from the Midwest, and that's what people in the Midwest do. Yeah, that is what people in the Midwest do, that's for sure. You know what women in California do? What do they do? They take everything you've got. Either, there doesn't seem to be a lot of women out here that seem like they want to settle down, that's for sure. Oh, they'd love to settle down for three, four years, as long as it takes to get everything you've ever earned. Right. So, good luck on that. So You're, 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 you're one advice. of these guys who will call me in five years going, Are you going to live in the town? I got with this girl, and I thought she was a nice girl, and I married her, and we had a kid, and now we're in divorce court, and she's taking me for everything I've got. Like all these other calls I get. Right. You, of course, know more than I do. So your advice is stay single and, uh, and keep moving. Well, stay single and get your act together. Get your career together. Get your life together. You want to settle down? Fantastic. Get a better job. One with long-term growth possibilities. Buy yourself a house before this window of opportunity closes. Pay your bills on time and keep your FICO score high. Save money and invest. And you will be settled down. And as, as, for, uh, as for women? No, you will be settled down. You don't need women to settle you down. Do you want to know how settled down some guys are? You ever see those apartment buildings by the freeway that say, if you lived here, you'd be home by now? Or they say, now renting? Right. And they're right by the freeway? Right. You know who lives there? Who's that? Guys who just got divorced. And there's nothing like sleeping with the traffic of the 101 freeway coming through the window. That's wonderful. All right, sounds good. So you got a lot to look forward to there, son. All right, thanks. Good luck. Jesus. Corrine on the Tom Ligas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Well, first of all, I wanted to ask you a question, but you just answered it with the last call, um, caller. So uh, if I can, I just want to give a little bit of advice to these men out there that you so-called try to teach. First of all, the reason why they get played so much is look at the callers that are calling in because they let themselves. I mean, come on. I'm probably one of the first female student of yours, and I've taken your advice to the T. And when I was going to call in, my question was going to tell you, when does it stop? And you just basically said it. You don't need to settle down. I don't need to settle down with anybody, just myself. And there it is. 
I don't need no man to be taking my money, um, telling me what to do, basically, you know, and it's just really funny. I don't even know how you have the patience for these guys who are just calling in, wah, 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 wah. This is my job. This is my job. Well, <laughs> you have one hell of a good job. <laughs> Um, well, I guess that's it. I love you. You're the best. And can you kick me out, Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beat to my heart. Oh. You're the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's the telephone number for Like Us 101, a brand spanking new summer edition of Like Us 101. If you have never called in with your question or comment, now is the time. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Our international line is open if you're calling from another country. The 1-800 number doesn't work outside of the United States, so call this number if you're in another country. We'll be happy to advise you. The uh, country code is 1, the area code 323, and the phone number is is five two zero sixty two eleven. That's one three two three five two zero six two one one. Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Um, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Okay. I spoke to you before uh, a few months ago about a situation that I had with um with my girlfriend. I ended up getting my girlfriend pregnant, and uh. My baby was born at the beginning of this month, and my life is hell. Of course it is. Not because of my baby, but just her family alone. It's like since my baby been here on this earth, I haven't even been able to enjoy being a father yet. I have her family in my business monitoring how I hold my baby. and, and well, That's what happens. And It is crazy. Well, I, you know, I don't know why you did that. I mean, I don't know why either. Like I told you before, last time I spoke to you, I was just being dumb. I stuck it out this whole nine months with her because, you know, it was the right thing to do. I really well, I, No, no, no. No, that's you feel it's the right thing to do. You did it because that's what you thought was the right thing yeah, to well, do. I didn't want to put no extra stress on her and she's carrying my baby. I mean, it's already too late. The baby's already in her. I didn't want to add any extra stress on to that. Well, why would she automatically assume that you would be there? True true but it's been nothing but hell she's a, she, her every every everybody possible it's gonna be like that until yeah. you can't take it anymore uh, until the kid turns 18 or until you can't take it anymore yeah. and my recommendation to you is do not knock this woman up again but you probably will no 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 i'm not even messing with her anymore like i've been done with her a few months ago like so I, why I just, you, are you living with her Oh, no, 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 no. You Good. told me not to live with her. I know better yeah. than that. Don't do that. Uh, and I'm not getting married to her. She comes from a Polynesian background, so her her family has kind of been on me about marriage and stuff like that, but that's not possible. Now, I can't, uh, even, uh, I can't even I can't even look at her now. Like, when she when she talks to me, I can't even honestly look in her face. I'm so... Who has custody of this child? Um, As of now, he lives with her. Right. And child support, are you paying? Um, The baby's not even a month old yet. Matter of fact, I just went and got um, uh, a money order from my bank yesterday that I'm going to give to her. So Did you ever get it? Wait, wait. Did you get a DNA test? No. Why not? Honestly, I don't think that's necessary. Cause she's <laughs> a, no, she's a, she's, she's a good person, but she's not a good person when it comes to relationships. Like, she, she's just super insecure. Like, she don't go out. She don't go nowhere. People who are super insecure generally have sex with other people themselves. That's why they suspect you. Uh, that could be possible. My sister told it's, it's, that. it's likely, number one. Number two, you're not having sex with her. Why wouldn't you be having sex with other people? True. I mean, like, why do you owe it to her to be monogamous? Uh, really, I don't. So then, stop pretending. I, mean, I, I know everything that you're telling me. I, I, I coach plenty of other people on this. I read all the Robert Greene books. I know better, but I don't know. I was just being an idiot at the time. Well, but the point is, the idios the idiocy continues here because uh, uh, what's happening is you have her under the impression that this is a monogamous relationship. No, now that my baby's been here, I don't even. 
I go over to see my child, and I don't even talk to the girl. That's not the point. Why is she accusing you of being with other people? Oh, she's been accusing me for months of that. Why is she doing it now? Oh, she hasn't done it lately. Ah. Like, since my baby's been here, no, that hasn't been the issue. Now the, so, issue, now the issue is that she's so... Uh, She's so immature that she's getting all of her family involved in our situation with this child. Well, understand there are some cultures where it has nothing to do with immaturity. That that is the way it's done. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a relationship with a Latina? Uh, I messed around with them, but nothing serious. Well, let me tell After you. If, you, went home to if you had a relationship with a Latina, you the family comes as a package. I understand that, but when you're 27, come on now. No, no, it doesn't matter if you're 27 or 19 or 50. The family comes as a package. And what you would consider to be interfering, some cultures consider it caring about each other. Yeah, now, I'm not saying I agree with that. I don't like people getting into my business either. But I'm letting you know that when you start getting involved in other cultures, these are some of the things you learn. Oh, I'm learning that. Every time I go over our house, like, it, it's gotten to the point where it's so bad that I don't even, I want to go see my baby, but then I don't even want to go to her house. Because every time yeah. I go over there, her family's lecturing me about something. They always feel they have to talk to me, but I don't see them ever talking to her about, about things. And she's so, um, she's so emotional. That I mean, I'm the type of person I don't like to argue. So while she's sitting there running her mouth, I just sit there quiet and won't say anything. That upsets her. She gets emotional, get loud, and start crying. It always happens when I'm in her comfort zone. When I'm always at her house. So, well, you know, why don't you just get an attorney and get uh, some visitation rights or joint custody, and then you don't have to spend time at her house to see the kid. Oh, that's in the process. Like I said, this is my first Good. time as a father. I'm still learning. I've, I've talked to a couple people, and I'm, I'm learning step by step what I need to do. But um, my real question that I have for you is that um, a good friend of mine, she told a, a girl that she worked with about me a few months back um, about that she wanted to hook me up with her. And all of a sudden, I end up having this baby. Now, she showed me a picture of this girl. And the girl is extremely hot. She's the Egyptian girl. But now she knows that I have this child. And one of her rules is that she don't mess with men who have children. How can how can I make her bend her rules a little bit? Like, what advice would you give me for that? All you can tell her is that your kid doesn't live with you. Which right now is true. But again, when you get involved with other cultures, these are some of the things that tend to happen. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If I'm blessed enough to meet my soulmate, why would I go and blow it with marriage? It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Great. Good. I think you're fascinating. Really? That, yeah. I, I've been listening to you for a long time. Well, not a long time, but a while. And um, I think you're fascinating. I think you have a lot of life experiences and you base your life, you, you know, your decisions on that. But I think that a lot of young men need the opportunity to to get their own experiences, because not all relationships are bad. No one, said, no one said all relationships are bad. What I have said is the odds of finding a good one are slim. I know. And you're you taking try, a real risk. Huh? Did you try? I mean, give it, I mean, if it fails, obviously it fails. I don't under, well, here's the thing. I, if you want to try, here's what you do. Don't get married. Don't okay. move in. Don't be monogamous. But then how are you having a relationship? Because you see each other, you talk, you hang out. I see. Not a long-term one, though. 
Well, you didn't say long term. You said a relationship. There's That's no true. benefit to a man to be in a long term relationship. What if he wants children? Even if he wants children. Uh, he's better off having a child with you, but not moving in with you and not getting married to you. Because, uh, and California is the worst offender, but there are many bad uh, states for this. Uh, if a marriage doesn't work out, men get taken to the cleaners. That's and true. in in Southern California, two out of three marriages end in divorce. Is it that high? Oh, that's very interesting. And uh, na nationally, it's one out of two. I know it's high. I know it's high. But I figured so, that you should so try. So why do it? No. Because, you, you, because that's you know, like saying you should try put. Yeah, that's like saying I've, I I just turned the gas range on and I've got this big blue flame. You should just try putting your hand in it. But having no relationships for the rest of your life can make you very lonely. But again, I didn't say don't have any relationships. I said don't move in. I don't mean, get married. Don't share a bank account. So don't give her your key. Single. Huh? But be single. That's in essence single. Well, you, you said relationships, not marriage. And getting married is definitely bad for men. Well, being single all your life would be really lonely. I mean, it's, now, it's, it's not, it's not the least bit. Darling, I, I live alone. I am I not married. you're much older than your listeners. Your listeners are like 20 something. I don't think but, they want to And, and let me tell life. you something. I wish I knew the things. That I'm telling these guys when I was 22, 21, when I got married at 18, I wish someone told me this stuff. Yeah, because you went through four of them. But had you not gone through four bad relationships, you probably wouldn't be thinking that. I, I'm telling you, there is still no benefit. All I have to look at is the divorce rate and how many guys get screwed in divorce. Even if I had one of those rare good marriages, I, I still wouldn't recommend getting married to others. That's true, I guess. All right. Any more than point. if I, as I say, if I jumped off a 16-story building and lived, I wouldn't say, all right, now your turn. I don't know if I'd associate with that means, but. Well, that's the odds of having a successful marriage nowadays are pretty much the odds of surviving a big fall. But I guess your perspectives are based on your parents, because a lot of people who are married or, or stay married are you know, you come from like a history of marriage with your parents. My parents, other... my parents were married for 40 years until the day my father died. I don't know what happened to you. Something went wrong. Uh, uh, no, no, nothing went wrong. No. Marriage is different. In all my parents time. got married in 1955. That was a different world. I guess so. This is a new world now. This is a world where your girlfriend doesn't stay home like my mom and make chicken noodle soup. Uh, your your wife goes to work. Other guys are trying to hit on her. She tries to dress a little sexy in the office to uh, brighten things up. She has a Facebook page, MySpace page, her own cell phone, her own cell phone number, her own voicemail with her own pass, passcode. She has her own email addresses. She goes out with the girls. She takes girls' night out or girls' weekend in Cabo. My mom never did things like that. And these are the reasons why it's a different world today. That's, I agree with you there. And I'll that is why you. my parents could be married 40 years, but you can't. I can. And no, I will. You, you won't. I will. I'll call you in 40 years. Are you married? Yes. What's your husband's name? My husband's name's Mark. And how long have you been married? A year and a half. Ooh, a year and a half, they all pretty much say the same thing. Oh, you watch, I'll be married 40 years, you watch. Okay. But we've been together for seven and a half years. Ooh, seven, you're still, it's still that short of time that you're counting the half years. Seven years, okay, we'll be fair. <laughs> all right, darling. All right, you have a good day. Thank you so much. Let's go to Ben on the Tom Likas show. It's Likas 101. Hello. Hello, Father. How are you? I'm doing great, Ben. Hi. How uh, first time on the air? I have a, a pretty funny story for you, actually. I, uh, I I got a pretty good girlfriend for the most part. All girls are crazy. We all know that. Uh, but I got I got one that actually took me to Florida for uh, for a good, nice vacation, all expense paid, nice condo, the whole deal. It's kind of crazy side, but I get back and. Uh, uh, one of my best friends, my buddy Chris, he's, uh, he's getting married here in a little bit and he was in town. And, uh, so I went over, hung out with him for a little bit. 
And uh, he decided to take me to a gentleman's club. A uh, really nice high-end place over in Fort Worth. And um, uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, we went, and uh, not even before I get in and sit down, I get a text message from my girlfriend saying, you're at an effing strip club. Uh, ben, you're 22 years old? I, I, I definitely. I, I'm totally 22 years old. It why do you, ha why do you have a girlfriend? Why? Well, uh, Tom, I listen to you a lot, and I, I respect a lot of things you say, and uh, I, I use, you know, I use a lot of it, you know, towards my life in some ways. Why do you have I a girlfriend? That. Why do you have a girlfriend that you have to hide from? Why? Well, I don't know, uh, but you know when. I mean, when if I you need to do, it, if you need to do the things that you have to hide from your girlfriend, that means you shouldn't have a girlfriend. And that's true. So that's uh, why true. do you have one? And well, the answer is I, I because you. In fact, what I did, I, I took your advice. I went and bought the most expensive cigar that they had. Had two girls topless come cut that cigar for me. I had a glass of Grand Marnier and I enjoyed my night. And now I'm single. Don't hook up with another girlfriend. <laughs> uh, you know, you can make it uh, a lot more in life single. That, that's very I true. I, there's no reason for it. No. All right, our email address, it's my name, it's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You got that? Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You can hear our show streaming live on our website. It's BlowMeUpTom.com. You click on the Listen Live button between 3 and 8 p.m. Pacific time. The Tom Likas Show.